Hey everybody, welcome to My Socially Speaking YouTube channel. Sorry, but that beat sounds nice to me. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Stacy. AKA Sunny Day. And soon I'm gonna drop to Stacy, okay? That's my YouTube name, my YouTube channel name. And I like it. Hopefully you like it too. I'm trying to bring the music back because I haven't used any music because my voice for some reason doesn't translate over. The music so hopefully uh, moving forward I'll be able to have music all the time because I actually do prefer to have music and I love this beat right here but I won't use the same beat every day I promise you I like all different kinds of music so I'll be trying out different things and feel free please let me know if you think that's a great idea or not I wanted to start off today in this segment Reintroducing you to my book, Social Work Drama, and it is all about my 20, almost 20 year journey through the social work sector. And again, it covers um, me employed as a mental health practitioner for almost 20 years in different settings mental health institutions, clinics, hospitals, shelters, family shelters, men's shelters, um, all over, psychiatric shelters, 9-11 um, um, divisions, just everywhere throughout the whole New York City and a little bit in the South. Uh, so it's been my struggle, my journey, um, through the social service sector again, and it's not what you think it's about. You probably think it's all about my involvement and my work with the clients or the patients. It's not. It's about the dynamics of working with staff with mental health issues and my ability to maneuver successfully, professionally, as best as I could uh, through those instances and those episodes that I um, encountered with coworkers. So um, it's a fascinating story, fascinating story. Um, I'm interested in knowing if others have actually had some of those experiences. Actually, I had a few people that read the book tell me that um, they've had some similar situations. Um, so it's, it's a great, great read. It's a very short and quick read. And um, so it, for those who really don't like to read, it, you won't encounter any issue uh, with getting through it because it's reasonably short and um, people get through it kind of quick because it's very, very interesting. So again, it is available on amazon.com and I recommend the ebook only because it's cheaper. It's $9.99 and uh, it's mobile. You can even have it on your basic, any kind of phone. Um, and just read through it uh, at your leisure. But I guarantee you, you will want to get through it quick. That's how interesting it is. And then it's not super duper 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 long. Like, you know. So uh, get that. And then let me know what your feedback is. Um, I'm sure you're going to be pleased. I'm sure. And enlightened, to say the least. Well, today's segment is all about gossip. 
I <clears throat> I wanted to cover that because um, I've been getting a lot of feedback from people who have been um, very, very hurt by gossip. And I want to talk about both. I want to talk about the initiator of the gossip, and I'm going to talk about the victim of the gossip. And I want to speak to the person who is the initiator of gossip and remind that person of the damage that they're doing because I'm not sure. Yeah, in some cases, yeah, we know some people wicked and they know what they're doing. We know that. But I'm kind of not really talking to them right now. I'm talking to the person that is not cognizant of what the trouble, the, the problem that you're causing by gossiping about someone. And in particular, I, I really want to let that person know that that gossip, or those people, that that gossip that you are engaged in that is untrue is even worse. You know, I mean, true stuff is bad too, but that gossip that's not true about someone, that attempt to defame someone's character. I mean, just think, would you want that done to you? And you know what? People say all the time, well, I don't care if somebody says this or that about me, or I don't care what they say, or I don't care what people think about me. Guess what? You should care what some people think about you. Your character, your credibility, your behavior. I mean, if it's somebody reputable or important or decent. Um, another's perspective of you, it is important. That's why gossip is so impressionable and people are so sensitive to it. Whether they admit it or not, no one appreciates being gossiped about even celebrities like some of them are very hurt and they're huge public figures or just huge public figures period even if you're not a celebrity but I guess you got to be a celebrity if you're a huge public figure right but yeah it's it's hurtful and I strongly strongly discourage it and if you must if you must absolutely talk about someone, pick one person, pick one confidant, pick a trusting person that you can share your intimate, critical, nasty thoughts or your mean thoughts or feelings or that disgusting stuff, that personal stuff you want to say. Pick a trusting person. If it's one or if it's two, but that going around, let's say you live in a, 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 on a block, a busy block and a big block. I'm just thinking about the block I lived in years ago. And um, it was a big block and everyone socialized and everyone congregated a lot and hung out a lot together. So to negatively gossip, which nobody really did, I'm a product, product of a good environment. I really am. It was a huge block. And um, pretty much nobody was really gossiping about anyone. But I'm just thinking about if someone did or if someone were to do that or if someone's experiencing that now, it's, it's very hurtful. You know, you got people looking at people sideways, you know, people looking at you sideways. And then it's like unjust, you know, sometimes the fake gossip, the fake news. It's like, it's not even real. And then you're sitting there, you know, causing other people to wrongfully judge another. And just imagine if someone did that to you. So please, please, especially with the state of the world that we have today, please stop gossiping. And if it is something you must share about someone, Pick and choose a confident, pick and choose a trusting person that you know will not 
read it. You know, just think about if it were you, because it causes so much hurt and pain and it causes low self-esteem if it's someone really young or, I mean, even older, because older people do experience low self-esteem also. So the next time that you're inclined to gossip, please, please consider that you would not want someone to do that to you. And for the people that's the victim of it, I want you to remember a lot of times, I'm just saying, the initiator of the gossip is jealous. Is jealous. Yeah, and envious. Because you just have, you really should be focusing on your own self and your own responsibilities instead of focusing so heavily on the gossip. And um, it's particularly impressionable in a work setting, especially if it's not true. Oh my gosh. It can just damage like the whole dynamic of the place of business and the person that is the victim and even the initiator is a distraction to your work. So again, even in your place of business, if you must, please pick just one, especially the one, not two, because that two could tell the next person, the next person, the next person. So if it's the your place of work, if you must gossip, I actually, when it comes to work, I say, just don't do it at all. But I know sometimes work can be so frustrating and you just need an out um, and you just got to burst and you got to say something, but pick that one person. Just find one person at work to confide in because going around person to person to person is, um, is detrimental and it can cause a huge, huge problem in the workforce. So practice that. Practice that. If you're a person that participates and partakes in gossip excessively, because I know everybody does it every now and then. Um, but I'm talking about the critical situations. That's what I'm talking about. The hurtful critical, the hurtful situations. And excuse me, people know when they are being, when they have bad intentions, when they're being very mean. I was trying not to say it, but people know that. People know themselves and they know exactly who they are. They know exactly what they are about. They know exactly what they're saying and doing. So you need to stop. Just stop. Redirect yourself. Practice doing something positive. Practice saying something positive. Practice thinking something positive. Especially if you know what you're saying is incorrect, inappropriate, and you know it's wrong. Knock it off because gossip is very, very serious. You could have neighbors disliking neighbors for no reason because you're feeling intimidated by someone or because you are upset about she took your parking space or Miss Susie Brown had a loud party or she didn't invite you to the party. <laughs> and I get it. You would be hurt by that. So you're just making up some sort of gossip. But gossip is very, very hurtful and harmful. And as we are in the process of becoming a more positive society, again, because society used to be real positive, we're in the process of turning things back around and focusing on optimism. So I'm not saying, I'm not recommending or suggesting to 100% do away with gossip. No, that's not what I'm recommending. Just lessen it and be more mindful of it and just be careful and be mindful of and pay attention to who is coming from, even if it's your own friend. That could be a good friend, but they could still have some hangups, you know, and some issues. And if the person comes to you, if your friend comes to you with some gossip, if your neighbor comes to you with some gossip, some nasty, mean, hurtful gossip, and you know it's nasty, mean, and hurtful, 
And as you are taking it in, it's okay to say to your friend, you know what? The music wasn't that loud. Or, you know what? Yeah, it was that loud, but that was the first time they had a loud party like that. So let's just hope they never do it again. You know, you don't have, you can help them like redirect them and help them to turn it around. That's how we're going to get back to our happy, good, healthy place. Because adding on, you know, the party was real loud. Oh yeah, the party was loud. I can't stand her. Did you see the people that came to that's not going to make our block nice. That's not going to make the neighborhood nice and healthy. And you never know. You might need that girl or that guy that had that loud party one day for something. After all, it is your neighbor. You never know. So when your friend comes to you and says, um, Miss Caroline took my parking spot. Like, she took it, like, several times. Or her guests took my parking spot. Um, her boyfriend took my parking spot. And your friend comes to you and says something like that. Feel confident in telling her, um, you know, it's, I understand it was an inconvenience to you. I get it. I'd be upset too, but hopefully she won't do it again. Or at least she didn't do it every time. Or at least she didn't do it that time. Just redirect her or the person is gossiping. Most likely it would be a female. So um, just redirect them to a positive way. Okay? So that is my segment for today and my goal as always is to put a smile on your face and in your heart and I hope that I did that and I will see you the next time and I can't wait because I can't wait to come talk to you that's just the way it is now I, I, I love it uh, like subscribe if you haven't and have yourself a wonderful day and please remember, take good care of yourself and take good care of each other. Peace. Thank you.